Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I am Stormrunner Gaming, and today I'm going to be doing a little mashup here. Not only on Stormworks, but on Scrap Mechanic as well. And anyone here that is on the channel for Stormworks alone, I do apologize. It's not going to just be Stormworks today. It's going to be both games. I'm actually going to be jumping in Scrap Mechanic here a little bit later, comparing a lot of the different logic systems in the game, in the two different games. And, um,. I've been working a lot with the logic in both games. Actually, I did a lot more uh, scrap mechanic forever ago on the channel, and that's when the channel was a lot younger. It had a lot less of an audience, but um, it's grown a lot more since I've gotten a bigger audience in Stormworks, and a lot of the logic that I've been working with is in Stormworks now, and I have yet to go back to scrap mechanic a lot, and I kind of think it's the easier logic system in Stormworks. And I'm not like bumping it saying it should be more difficult. I'm saying it has a lot easier systems. Like it gives you numerical values, all these different um, functions you can do in logic with Stormworks. Although it is a little bit limited compared to Scrap Mechanic because Scrap Mechanic you can actually connect up multiple, um, I guess you could call it, connections or points to one of those logic blocks and if you guys don't know scrap mechanic it is a really cool and fun game kind of like stormworks but it's more geared towards land vehicles they don't really have anything water but of course they have a plethora of mods there that you can um, examine but the main four um, logical inputs they have in scrap mechanic or and or XOR and NOT. And you basically have to build, well there are two more, I can't exactly remember them right now, but um, you basically have to build all your logic off of that. And getting numerical values and everything else from systems and stuff is actually quite difficult to do. I mean, I have built a couple different things to where um, you can like take values and test them and stuff but it's very difficult to set up and actually you are going to have to go to the workshop and download mods to do a lot of the logic in scrap mechanic and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about here in a little bit but i'm going to be just working through stormworks right now well i'll be jumping between games here but yeah um we do have a couple different values like the memory registrar in this game it is one block but as you can see now in Scrap Mechanic, it is actually four blocks connected together. Well, technically you only need three, but to have a full memory um, bit, as you would call it, you actually need four logical blocks that um, store a value for you. And there are some things you cannot even do in Scrap Mechanic that you have a lot of logical inputs in Stormworks. So like threshold gates definitely i mean both of the games do have some similar um readouts like you can get a sensor in both games like we have a sensor in here and we actually have multiple sensors that give us a lot of different values here to where scrap mechanic only has the one distance sensor at the moment so you are quite limited on what you can do with that one sensor to where in uh, Stormworks you have so many different applications with so many different um, logical things you can do from multiplying and um, you can also do PID controllers and I don't even know if there's a mod out there for scrap mechanic there probably is because there's probably thousands of mods now but yeah I would jump over well we could talk a little bit more here in Scrap Mechanic. We do also have like cool different things you can actually create in Scrap Mechanic. You are going to have to put a little bit more logic behind it. Like this blinker is one block, but when we jump over to Scrap Mechanic, as you can see, we have multiple blocks to make a blinking thing. And just a real quick note, guys, on this logical system here in Scrap Mechanic, you actually have to have this little timer running constantly, or the blinker does not actually work when you start it back up as well. And I think capacitor, clamps, counters, anything with a numerical value for an input or output, I do not think you can do within Scrap Mechanic. You can change that to a binary number and then test that, but other than that you cannot take it, but you'd have to, um, I think you'd have to set like a, um, a value, a threshold, 
which actually you could set a threshold with sensors or something. I think that's one way you could do it in scrap mechanic. But there's a lot of hoops to jump through in the scrap mechanic world for creating a lot of logic. Like um, something you could set up basically like one block for a PID controller to control something. You would need like a whole probably like a wall of logic and scrap mechanic. And I mean, I'm not complaining really. I'm, hopefully I'm getting my point out there. I'm just trying to um, talk about the differences between it and why I kind of, I don't know, strayed away from scrap mechanic a bit because I just I find the logic a bit easier and I can get so many more things done in Scrap Mechanic. But I am going to run over to um, Scrap Mechanic right here, so I'm going to be right back with that. Alright guys, we are over here in Scrap Mechanic and these are a lot of the little and different things that we have for logic. And actually there are not that many blocks, but of course you can add these onto an engine or different systems that can be given an output, like the bearing or something. And um, Scrap Mechanic has a interesting mechanic to where you can have the bearings be controlled by this controller. So you have a rotation editor to where you can hook up a source to that and turn it. And then you can get values out of that. So that is something a bit different from Stormworks. And... Um, I think it's a really cool system and I love playing with it, but I'm kind of, um, how you say, burnt out and waiting for their um, survival series, not series, their survival game to come out, game mode. And they've been taking a while and so many people have been anticipating that survival mode and I've just been sitting here waiting for it patiently. But yeah, I might jump back into the game a bit more once that comes out and do like a series on that or something. Definitely you guys would like that, but you can get so many different logical outputs from these things as well. And um, we also do have a um, switch and a button as well as a sensor, timer, and this little logic block we saw a bit earlier in the video with these six different gates. And a lot of your logic, um, if you're doing probably more advanced stuff, you're going to be connecting a lot of these up together in like different patterns to tell it what to do and um, it li just like Stormworks it's going to be crucial where these are coming and going to so if you want to have something activate when everything is running that is where um, scrap mechanic kind of prevails if you want to connect up like eight things and tell it you can only work when all eight of these things are connected up are running for it or we have like if an even number of links are triggered or active, it'll activate. Uh, it has cool little features like that that um, you can probably do in Stormworks, but um, you'd have to connect gate upon gate or something, or like different types of bits on bits, and like, oh, it's set to the um, even one, so I've got two activated here. I oh, know that's an output of that. If I put it, there we go, and that's already seeing the ground, so if we switch that to one, yeah, now it's huh, interesting. Anyway, yeah, the logic for scrap mechanic is definitely a bit more difficult than Stormworks because, like I was saying earlier, we have um, like a lot of hoops to jump through, like especially for memory bits and um, even blinkers and stuff. We have to do a, a lot more blocks and um, connecting things together to even make those things work. And, um, yeah. Alright guys, and I am back in a different world here with a little example for you guys on a little bit more advanced logic here. Of course, we could scale this up and have hundreds of these memory bits running different things. But what we've got here is a little shooting range for our spud gun. And if we shoot in between all three of these sensors, that will rotate 270 degrees and over there it'll open up our door and I've set this up through three memory bits connected up to each one of the sensors so once they get that input they will switch over to the other side of the memory bit and that will activate our controller which controls three of these pivots here which will turn and send this sensor off which will in turn connect to here and open our door on the other side over there and the little heads right here just to pop up and scare you so when they pop up you shoot it but yeah, that uh, was a little mini game I built forever ago. So that was a little example. And there are even crazier logical designs that where we get into um, 
like computer calculation types of things but i have yet to dabble in a lot of that stuff i'm only mid-range logic for scrap mechanic at the moment but yeah so that has been the comparison um of course i'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this and um what you think about the differences and everything between um stormworks and the scrap mechanic like logical systems like is it difficult is it easier in a sense between the two games or um and which one you like I mean, some people may gear towards the scrap mechanic because that's what they know. They like the system. Other people, they've been getting into it through uh, Stormworks, so maybe they're rooted more into that. But yeah, that is about all the time I do have for today. So if you guys like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks slash Scrap Mechanic and more of my content. But I've never been great at my people need me and I need to go.